Welcome to the Ignorance of Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Fabian Motherfucking Ojeda, and I don't know shit, but that's okay. All right, all right, let's get this shit started. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Ignorance of Strength Podcast. Hope you all enjoyed episode number 19, the Living Big and Tall episode. Uh, definitely a lot of good information there for any of you guys that are pushing that 2x, 3x, and above mark. Uh, but we're back, and this is a special show. We're back with shit show number two. By now, you should all be familiar with today's guests. I want to welcome back, in no particular order, Whitey. <laughs> Fuck my well, guy. <laughs> Potter. Nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and we got uh, Mr. <laughs> uh, Leader... In the in all the polls, especially the stripper polls, Sosa. <gasps> oh, <yeah. laughs> How you guys doing? What's up? How you guys all doing today? Right. I know uh, Sosa, you just put a, a a terrible twos toddler to bed right now, right? It gets worse every day. <laughs> <laughs> how about how about the rest of you, Miscreants? How you doing? Good. Tired from work. Lots of work this weekend. It's hot. All right, at eight. Got off at seven thirty. Wolf down a burger just to get get here be, be with you guys. Yeah, I mean I, sacrifices. I, <laughs> I like that we're you know we're able to get this shit you know going every ten episodes or so. Uh, the first time around, I think we had a little bit of sound issue, but um, how do you guys think it sounded? I mean, overall, how did the how did the episode come off to you guys? I thought it sounded great. I liked hearing the messages from uh, from Ray and Gomez was cool afterwards. Like I couldn't hear them when we were recording the podcast, but yeah. afterwards I was like that was like. One of the coolest things to get the messages from them. That was neat. Oh yeah. Same thing. When we were trying to record this podcast and you were like playing it for us, didn't hear a goddamn thing. <laughs> you were, I think you were going out a little bit with your your audio quality, and then uh, we went over to the we went to go listen to the podcast. Everything sounded good. Even the even the videos you you uh, queued up. Yeah. I I thought it was great, man. I fucking no complaints here. It, it sounded great. Oh yeah. I think generally, um, we got a lot of good feedback on the episode. Um, you know, I, people really like our little back and forth banter. And I think, uh, they, you know, I got people telling me like, okay, I like, I like that. You know, I'm able to see how you guys converse with each other. Um, so that's why I thought it'd be cool to make it a recurring thing. So I hope you guys don't mind, but we're going to, we're going to do this every, every now and then. Sounds great. Right. Sounds awesome. Right. Let's do it. <laughs> Uh, I see you guys are sending some messages back and forth right there in the chat. You sons of bitches. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the fuckery has begun. <laughs> it already started. See, this was a shit show. No no rules, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Jay, you guys listen to any of the other episodes besides ours? You, you better say yes, because, God damn it, I'm trying to get all my plays here. Yeah, of course. I have been. I, I, I'm caught up all the way to... Uh... The band you interviewed. Okay. That Kid Finish. I listened to Kid Finish. What's up, guys? And so did yeah, listen to shit, did he? <laughs> he's, try- he's right now uh, scrolling through Spotify. Yeah, I listened to episode number 15. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening to the synopsis, reading them off. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, man. You know what? There was no polls this time, so, you know, what, 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 can, I, what can I expect? Plus, you did win Biggest Asshole, so. It, uh, yeah, I mean, come on. You got to live, up, gotta to live up to the name. We need to print him a trophy. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I, think you, I know. It, I, mean, I think you should have. You should have done some posts. Some get some polls going, especially with all your uh, Photoshop skills you've been improving upon. <laughs> Would have been interesting. Which one do you guys like better, us as a WWF wrestlers or us as Stand by Me? WWF. The deep fakes were the best. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I like that. I was Corey Feldman. <laughs> yeah, you had to be right. <laughs> You had to be. There was no other. There was nobody else that could play that role. <laughs> oh my god! So, why do you mention he might print you some trophies for that poll? Um, catch us awesome. up, guys. What's uh, what's everybody been up to? And I know Whitey's been, you know, doing some 3D printing over there, right? Yeah, yeah, that's fun. I've been doing a lot of models for people. Probably oh. do some uh, some barbecue models or something. <laughs> I thought he meant for your side business, nude modeling. Uh, well, that too. <laughs> I'll sculpt myself for you if that's what you'd like. Whatever. Get hey, that, man, that, that. I can see that shit. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be my avatar. 
<laughs> a little fucking pigtail coming out. That, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Might even make the Christmas card list this year. <laughs> Stuff your stocking with that. What, what about what about everybody else? What you guys been up to? Oh uh, man, I've been just fucking working, and I started going back to school like a dumbass. But you know, gonna knock it out. <laughs> Don't know why I could keep putting myself through this fucking shit, but uh, you know, we'll see. Potter, you've been over there being fucking uh, Tim the Toolman Taylor in your backyard, right? Going off, oh, 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 oh. more power. <laughs> okay, yeah, more power. <laughs> and there, there he is at the fucking drill. Uh, fucking splitting my time between working outside in the heat and uh, being at the shop, and unfortunately, that's not much cooler. Damn AC unit can't keep up with the heat and all the yeah. all the dryers that we're using inside the shop. So it's like staying at like 82, 85 degrees inside the shop, much as much as I'd like for it to come down. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we just gotta shut everything off so that way the dogs can feel cool, you know? Yeah. Well, for me, unfortunately, I've been unceremoniously laid off, gentlemen. And so, what? for the first time in my life, I'm collecting a little of that sweet, sweet uh, government unemployment check. You know? Damn, but, man. What so, happened? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. You know, so I didn't question it. I just thought, you know what? This is the universe saying, take some time off. Fuck it. But, in you know, mm-hmm. in, in the absence of work, you know, I did start the little barbecue side hustle, which was pretty lucrative and delicious. And why it is delicious. Why, I can, can attest totally, to that yeah, one. Yeah, Whitey's uh, uh, been an every, an every week customer. He actually paid for it. <laughs> I paid with real money this time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you guys, you guys got to try that. Uh, got to try that barbecue at some time, man. Some, some good shit, you know. But one thing I think that unfortunately hasn't changed uh, since ten episodes ago, which is roughly two and a half months ago, this fucking pandemic, right? I remember uh, the first episode. The first episode we did the shit show. I'm over there like, hey, it's almost over, and you guys are all <laughs> laughing your asses off. I'm like, These motherfuckers. I'm like, I'm being, no, it's almost over. Damn it. But uh, then Bo- Potter blamed all the protesters and Black Lives Matter and everything. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Sorry, I pointed something out that, you know, fucking made a difference to it. But all right. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? Yeah. <laughs> but it seems know. like, uh, you know. Can we, we get th- Ben Shapiro to fucking translate for us here? <laughs> I'd like that, please. Um, I, you know, please, I thought we're, we're going to go back to uh, to normal, but. You know, here we are, fucking same old shit, right? I mean, nothing's really going back to normal. I mean, we're, we're able to eat outside and shit like that, but what the hell's going on? Potter, you want to take on Black Lives Matter again? <laughs> hey, wait, wait, when, no, <laughs> when are you going to create the vaccine that the world wants to know? The show uh, is worldwide. The, the, the very next day after the elections. <laughs> Can you guys hear me laughing? I'm fucking laughing right now. <laughs> well, what do you guys think's going on with this? When the hell is this going to go uh, be over with, if, if at all? So, um, the, the way I see it is uh, that the media coverage about the the, the virus is going to change. It's definitely going to change after the election, that's for sure. Mm. But the virus itself and the impact it's having on the economy and the world. It definitely isn't. It's just going to be, you know, pushed under the rug a little bit more. Mm. The, the, the election has nothing to do with, you know, fucking science. Mm-hmm. So that's still going to rage through our system and fuck things up. But the coverage, the media coverage about it is going to change. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter. It, it's going to change after mm. the election. The actual virus, no, it's still going to run its fucking course. Yeah. I don't think there's anything we can do about the virus. Uh, we just got to get through it, unfortunately. I think Sosa said it best, you know, the news and their, their fear mongering that they do with shit like that, you know, mm-hmm. they make money off of ratings and what are you going to check in on? It's fucking bad news. Mm-hmm. Why do you- I just want to get back to normal, really. <laughs> just can't wait. Like, I'm tired of being cooped up here. I- I'm trying to fucking share some drinks and cook for y'all motherfuckers. <laughs> you know? Hey, I've been showing up with my mask and everything, get my food. Yeah, get I- my food on. Why do we why do we'll pass by in the little Yaris, reach his hand out, right? Reach my hand out, give me the food and leave. Grab his little bag out. of ribs and get the hell out of there. No, he's too busy for me now. He's like, get the fuck out of my driveway or whatever, like somebody else is coming. <laughs> I'm like, hey, why do you gotta order right after you? Get the fuck out. Yeah. Why do it's kinda like I told that bitch in Vegas, here's a bag of food, get the fuck out of here. 
That really happened, by the way. He, t- <laughs> <laughs> he told me <laughs> there was this chick there, and and I, yeah, he didn't want to be around her anymore. And he's like, he's like, Whitey, take this bag of food. I'm going in the other room. Get her the fuck out of here, or whatever. Like, so that's exactly what I did because I'm a good friend. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to over the course of this uh, this episode because it's very free form. Um, I wanted to go over some maybe some stories we didn't go over last time. I know uh, a couple of you guys had daddy duties calls, so we have to end a little abruptly. Um, so Potter, I think you had some stories that uh, you wanted to bring up from last time, right? Kind of like a, uh, a carryover from the last episode, right? Yeah, there was a few we had. Uh, let's see. The, the first one I remember uh, us doing was uh, for some reason I think maybe Whitey started it senior year. We started playing the slapping game. I think you started that, whole, Fabian. I might have started, started it. <laughs> I might have. I think he's, Fabian was kind of mean to everybody. Like I don't know. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> he would have won the biggest asshole in, in fucking <laughs> high school. I think I don't know. But, I mean, I was hanging like, out so, with so, Fabian. See, Sosa heart got hardened over the years. Fabian was hardened <laughs> through the years. <laughs> it seems like everything, like the nicknames, they all came back to me, right? The slapping game came back to me. <laughs> but what did the game consist of? Because I don't remember. Like, who, how did it, how was it played? We just fucking slapped each other for no reason? Dude, I don't know. Maybe, why he says he started it, but I, I remember me and you, we went to wrestling camp. Mm-hmm. And maybe there was like a half month off before school started. And then, dude, we're, we're you know, senior years happen. And then uh, I just remember we were just there at PE. And all of a sudden we're, you know, the no look slap across uh, a circle and just see what you get. If not, they, they fucking block you and then you get smacked back. <laughs> that was just the game every day. We just knew. We just, we just all met up and you just knew. You just had to be on your fucking guard. If not, you're, uh, we're going to slap you with an old palm across the face. Huh. That was it. I, I swear, you, ca- Fabian, you came up with that game because you like nobody would screw with you. That's probably like, it. You could get yeah. away with slapping somebody, and they wouldn't do it. They'd be like, oh. I get, and they'd walk away. They just, they're just they not going to mess with you. It's like uh, like me trying to fight Brock Lesnar or something like that. I don't know. Like, <laughs> okay. How the fuck do I not remember any of this? Because uh, you were too busy fucking stealing tots. <laughs> I don't think you ever got. I don't think he ever slapped you. No, know, you know what it was too. It was that too, but probably it, it was. It might have also been because you were. It was the time that you were taking a shit because you always took a shit before practice for a good twenty minutes. I, I or did. So. I did. I did. I can tell you that practice. That happened before to this day. practice started. Maybe maybe at the end of lunch. Um, I do remember one time we were at. Uh, I want to say it was the. Chino Hills Ayala tournament mm-hmm. over winter break. Okay. In particular. And, um, good chunk of half the team was, uh, was all hanging out because they already got eliminated, pushed out of the tournament. Yeah. <laughs> Except for maybe like Fabian and maybe Ozzy or, or, or something was, uh, was still in, but he was somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So they were all hanging out. I think even Hawkins joined in from Arroyo. Oh, yeah. And we just like shoot the shit and like, Randomly, during telling jokes, we'd like try to slap each other, and then um, that one chick from uh, God, what was her Millican High School? Mill- the Millican chick. Mm-hmm. She came mm-hmm. in and was hanging out with us, and then like when she left, she fucking slapped you, baby, and mm-hmm. and all of us just had like this look, like she just struck God, and like what what's happening? What just happened? But, and I, I think her name was Jackie. It was, and you know what I did? I slapped the bitch back. <laughs> I don't let that shit go. Y'all know already, but I remember, I remember she's hanging out with us, and, and uh, uh, I don't know. She had a weird face, and so like I thought she was like uh, growling or something. And, and and I look at her, I'm like, oh, that's scary. And she goes, how is that scary? I'm smiling at you. I'm like, yeah, it's scary. <laughs> but that was kind of like uh, at tournaments. It was kind of like a. A, a, a legendary mythical character there, no? What yeah. was the, the 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 Millican uh, the Millican girl and or her mom? Yeah, yes. but everybody. Whenever she goes, everybody her. would go nuts. So you which, mentioned her mom, and yeah, I remember we were all gawking over over her. So what was it? Wasn't that 
was it wasn't around the time that like fucking uh, American Pie came out and we were like calling her a milf or some mm-hmm. shit? <laughs> yeah, that that was her that was her nickname it was the Millican milf. Yeah, so Millican milf. Yeah, so I don't know if if everybody was kind of like all head over heels for the girl or for the mom, but I'm pretty sure it was the mom. Fucking the Millican chick. I just remember she had like each thigh it just looked like a tree trunk, fucking giant ass thighs and. Mm-hmm. Just watch that matches, and uh, she'd just stand right up. Yeah, I remember somebody trying to, like, leg ride her, and, like, she would just stand right up, and the ref would be like, all right, go back down, and she would just, be sad. no fucking issue. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else, Potter? What are some other stories that you that we, that we omitted from last time? We, you, uh, you guys were mentioning the Who's the Whitest game. That was at the same tournament, that same uh, Ayala High School tournament. We tried playing Who's the Whitest um, God, I don't remember what everybody was like, like throwing in. Uh, I think I just remember that, uh, again, Hawkins from a Royal one, he's like, oh, I got a porch. Everyone's like, ah, oh, what? It's a, got porch. a porch. Yeah. <laughs> right, the porch there, one is. there was some criteria, right? And Whitey, you were actually in the running just because of your skin color. Potter, right, dude, that, that was about it. I didn't win anything. No, you did, and you were you were super ghetto. But Potter, <laughs> uh, you were <laughs> you were in the running because you ate at the dinner table. Your family prayed. Uh, both your parents were still together. Uh, and he what, and he had a Porsche. He had a Porsche. Porsche. Was, he had a Porsche. And I think we ate like in and out one time, and we had utensils nearby. And you ate in and out at the dinner table. That was a big, a big. At the dinner fucking... table, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fast food. That was a big qualifier. I think it was mostly that. I think I think that was the big one that you guys kind of like made fun of. Like you guys all eat at the dinner table. Uh huh. With in and out. What? Your family loves you. <laughs> fucking loser. <dude. laughs> dinner table. What do you mean? It wasn't. It wasn't a converted fucking living room. <laughs> you come from a nurturing household. What up? <laughs> you didn't have an extra couch and bed in there to fucking host like you know deadbeat relatives fuck you <laughs> oh man Potter any other stories uh the handicap kid from high school oh, you guys yeah. remember that one <laughs> so I think this set this up I know what ta- Potter's talking about it seems to, it seems to me that Potter <laughs> likes putting us in hot water and making us look bad when it comes to the topic <laughs> of handicapped people. Then the last episode, right? He really that's made it, me, he really made me seem like a, a dick. I don't know if I want to comment on this. Wow! And then Whitey's about to get the wrath of Potter <laughs> right now. So set it up, Potter. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um. So at Mountain View High School, there was this. I was distinctly remember there was this one guy. He was in a wheelchair, electric wheelchair. And oh, God. So, do you remember him, Sosa? You remember seeing him at least? No. Vaguely? No? I'm going to plead the fifth on this one. I don't remember shit. Anyways, um, something happened to this kid. I can't remember what it was. He either died or he got really sick and went to the hospital. And they put out like a giant banner that they had like the whole school sign during lunch hour. And I thought he died. I'm just just like fucking just sign my name and be like sorry something like that and then why'd he put signed it too right next to me and I didn't know what he signed I'm like and we walked away I'm like dude I can't believe that guy died and he's like what no no he didn't I put get well soon on this what a dick Oh, that. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, pa- why do you do these things, Potter? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, though? I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here because this is not where the insanity ends. Because Potter got, and you know, I thought about this over the last 10 episodes. Potter got me in, in some hot water over a handicapped person again when we were adults working security. And on 4th of July at a, at a country club, right? And so I'll tell this yeah. story. And Potter, you can end it um, towards the end there. I uh, I was supervising, I don't know how many guys, like 40 guys, right? Why do you, of us, yeah. You were there too, plus. Whitey? Yeah, I was there. Uh, he wasn't there that time. Your brother was. 
Okay. And then one of his friends. Maybe. But, but uh, it was at a it was it was at a uh, at a country club. Where am I? On Fourth of July. Um, yeah. Potter was. When I was on. Was that with Pig and Travis? Because I think I was there. You were there then, yeah. No. Yeah, I, w- I was there with Anthony and Pig Travis. Uh... It might have been a separate year, but it was the same event. Gotcha. Yeah. So I'm 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 supervising the event, um, covering a lot of guys, and uh, and specifically in the pool area uh, where some of my guys, Potter included, and uh, I, I I got a call on the walkie from Potter. Um, saying, hey, Fabian, there's this, uh, there's this guy kind of creeping around the kiddie pool. What do you want me to do? There's people complaining. I'm like, well, fuck, like, let's try to get him out of there kind of thing. And then, you know, he's still there. And so right, I go, all right, I'm going to come take care of it. You know, so I try to be as polite as possible. It's a fucking country club, rich people, right? And the guy did look like a creep. You know, one of the, you know, the rules were you had to either have like a wristband that you're a guest or a member. He had neither, right? So I'm like, okay, easy out. We'll just take him to the fucking table. Uh, see if he needs a wristband. If he can't get a wristband, we'll kick him out. And so I talked to the guy. I'm like, "Hey, man, um, do you have a do you have a wristband?" And he goes, he, "He's just very deadpan in the face." No. I'm like, "Are you a member or guest or anything like that?" No. Okay. I mean, well, shit. That was easy for me. I'm like, "All right, let's go check your name at the table over here." You know, we gotta make sure that you're in the right spot. You know. And he was okay. He was walking over to the gate, but as soon as he gets to the gate, the son of a bitch. You know, he turns around and he fucking hits me in the face, right? And I fucking go red. What did I do, Potter? You did probably, like, the the quickest pivot to do, like, a hip toss. And you fucking slammed him on the ground and covered him. And real quick, you, like, threw, like, these short little jabbing elbows right on his head. Because he was still squirming and uh, and trying to fight back. And so... uh, The cops came shortly after... And so I turn him over to police, and, you know, it's one of those things where somebody sees a fight going on, like, oh, shit, what's going on? Everybody's watching. You know, it's a bunch of young guys, like, oh, you beat the fuck out of him. Like, yeah, I kicked that guy's ass. Fuck that guy. Right? And then uh, <laughs> I want to say about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes later, I don't know if it was Potter or somebody, somebody else in the pool area, but they get, I get a call on the walkie. Hey, uh, you know that guy that uh, you squirted out a, wh- a little while back? I'm like, yeah, thinking in my head, I kicked that guy's ass. I think it was you, Potter, because you used foul language. So you're like, yeah, it, it turns out that uh, he's actually, he's he's retarded. And his handlers uh, are came by, they're very upset, and they want to talk to somebody. I'm like, you s- I remember more of this. You want me to fill in some gaps? Go for it, fill some gaps in, you son of a bitch. <laughs> All right, so this dude was wearing, like, long pants and a shirt and glasses, and I just remember, he was just, like, staring at, like, the little kids, uh, like the water park area, he was just he was just there staring at them for like the longest time. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Fabian did it, scored him out and everything, threw him out. And then uh, we called it in. I'm like, hey, Fabian, uh, the dude's back inside. Mm. What the hell? And then uh, somebody else on the radio chimed in, like, uh, yeah, he's a uh, he's like the son of somebody that lives here. He's actually uh, mentally challenged. Mm-hmm. He, he's fine. He's not gonna hurt a fly. Yeah. We're like, Fabian, Fabian just, just threw and assaulted a, a handicap, a uh, mentally challenged person. <laughs> but at the time, it, the dude totally tried to like, I don't know, like smack Fabian or like choke him with like both his hands around your neck. And Fabian had none of that shit. Like right out the gates, bam, fucking chucked him. It was incredible. Very proud of him at that moment. I, I'm, I'm not proud of that. I mean, I think it's uh, a pretty, <laughs> pretty fucked story. But it seems like every time something happens against a handicap, huh. Potter's a part of it. Would you, you right. guys agree or disagree with that? Is that a fair assessment? I would like to agree with that uh, notion there. It happens one more time. I think he, he probably handed me, it. I'm th- now that I think about it, he probably handed me that card and told me this kid was sick or something. Like, so. And he's like, oh, I meant he's dead. Wait, did you say it happened one more time? <laughs> yeah, it said if it happens one more time, then yeah, I am sending you a pretty Oh, soon. if it happens. So you better watch... So, I think Sosa better watch his ass, you know? He's gonna, he's gonna have him... Next time you guys go on a little hunting trip, you're gonna, he's gonna have you <laughs> shoot a fucking autistic kid or something, man. I ain't shooting shit, man. Hey, tell me, tell, tell me about that fancy little hat you showed me. 
<laughs> Isaac, you want to talk about the hat? <laughs> let, let me just give you some background, right? I'm a, I get my shotgun. I learned that Isaac also has a shotgun. He likes to shoot clays. So we shoot clays a couple of times. And then like a year later, I'm like, hey, man, you want to go fucking uh, bird hunting? And, you know, we both have shotguns. Let's take them out. He's like, yeah, man, let's fucking do it. It's our first time out there, like, fucking ever. We don't know what the fuck we're doing, right? Uh, we're getting ragtag gear, like a fucking shirt, a hat, uh, some little bit of ammo. And I'm like, all right, man, just make sure you have some orange out there so we don't get in trouble. He's like, yeah, yeah, I just got my shit at Turner's. And Isaac, go. So you got it. So depending on what you're hunting, sometimes you, you got to wear some orange. And oh, fuck it, I just got off of work. I think Turner's was closing in, like, 30 minutes. I just, like... Ran in there, because, like, the very next morning at, like, fucking 3 o'clock in the morning, we are going to head out to go hunting. Shit. So I just grabbed pretty much, like, the first orange hat I saw, because I didn't feel like dropping a whole bunch of money for a shirt. Uh -huh. I know I needed a hat. Dumb ass me, I didn't fucking try it on <laughs> until uh, we rolled up to the spot, and we're trying to get ready or gearing up, and I, I fucking throw on the hat, and uh, it is definitely... Uh, like four sizes too small. <laughs> Even the open without the snaps, it was a youth. Oh, okay. like, uh, my I fucking like, big ass head. I get like XL size hats. I got a fucking big ass dome, dude. <laughs> so that shit did not fit at all. I was like, right, so 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 did not let 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 that down at all. <laughs> he brings that up every every season since then. At least like he was maybe, there to give you that antler hat. I can't, <laughs> I can't imagine you guys out there, like, you don't know what you're doing, and all the fucking seasoned veterans of the of the game are probably like, oh, look at these newbies. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you see Potter with the fucking little kitty hat, right? <laughs> uh, I was like, maybe he's Jewish. I don't know. I didn't know this about him. <laughs> <laughs> it had a bill, all right? But, uh, yeah, that, that shit did not fit at all, and it was just... Yeah, I was fucked up. I didn't come out. You know, sp speaking of uh, of some firsts, you know, I think uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up was, uh, uh, and, and and I think, uh, unfortunately, so this one's going to exclude you, but I don't know if I told you the story. I'm going to embarrass uh, Potter and Whitey a little bit here. Who remembers <laughs> the origins of our first visit to a gentleman's club? Oh, I remember the origins. <laughs> I, oh, I think it, it was like we turned 18. Wait, wait, hold on. Before you say anything, did you ever hear what? about this at all, Sosa? No, 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 no. I haven't been privy to this information prior to today, so please you, you might continue. Have, I think you might have been in the in, in the Army by then. I'm not sure. Uh, no, I don't think so. he was in, in you just yet. But, go, but go, he wasn't around. Go on, Whitey. I think this was when I was homeless, so I probably wasn't around, much less had money for strippers. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I turned 18, and, and I was talking to Fabian, and I'm like, we gotta go to a strip club, you know, like, we're 18 now, you know, like, it was like a rite of passage, right? So We are men. <laughs> yeah, we are men. So, so of course, my mom clipped out coupons out of the newspaper, <laughs> which Fabian loved. I'm like, I got coupons. <laughs> and what did she tell you? Like, you fucking got them? <laughs> What are you serious? serious? No. What? It was from the like the That's LA Times. Yeah, what for, was that? It was from like the like the the LA Times or some shit, right? Yeah, something like that. We had newspapers back then. Uh huh. The fucking penny <laughs> saver. But, whatever. It probably was the penny saver. Is the funny part. Uh huh. But oh uh, man, and then was, we concocted the plan to get Potter out of his house. Well, really quick before <laughs> that, before that, um, we had enough clippings for each of us so we could get in free, right? But, uh, <laughs> what did your mom tell you to do? I don't recall. To call ahead. What do you remember? Just to call ahead and make sure the coupons were valid. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I don't remember that. <laughs> but, go, uh, but go on. We wanted to get Potter in. So we concocted that plan to get him out of the house. <laughs> well, I think we showed up at his house and they were doing something, no? Or... Uh-huh. You picked me up from... Uh, kind of ambushed me at work. They're like, let's go. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> so then I went home and went to go change. <laughs> Into your best fucking pair of sweatpants or what, you goddamn pervert. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, why do you, I remember you told a very good lie to, to, uh, to Mrs. Chavez. What did you say? 
I told her we were going to a church carnival, which we did go to a church carnival. It just wasn't at that time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, to, you know, to make things worse, you know, we're going in with our fucking, with, with our, with, with our fucking cheaper creeper coupons, right? And we've got no money, by the way. Absolutely we had zero. <laughs> we have no money at the strip club. I, I love it. I, I don't think I had, like, even a dollar in my pocket. And why do you... No, there was, I'm not joking. There was no money. So... <laughs> we just walked in there. I don't know what we were thinking a strip club was. So but even, it wasn't what we got. <laughs> that's for damn sure. Even with, you know, the free coupons, they're like, hey, you still need to pay your fucking, your mandatory drink. I'm like, and why do you and I look at each other like, oh, shit, we don't... We didn't know about that, you know? <laughs> you didn't bring no drinks into the So, shit. So we look at Potter like, hey, can you cover the drinks? Potter covered the drinks. He did <laughs> cover the drinks, yeah. But, but take it from there, Whitey. What happens next at the fucking uh, Sunday afternoon uh, stripper fest? Oh, my fest? God. The strippers were pissed off at us because we didn't have any money. And they like, we were like, kind of get away from us. <laughs> we don't have cash or whatever. And they're like, what did you want to do? Just sit here and drink Coke and watch naked ladies all day? <laughs> Well, and I was thinking yeah. as an eighteen year old, I was like, I thought that's what we were going to do. Yeah, why do you tell the stripper? Yeah, that's that's kind of the point. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they're hounding us the whole time. You know, they're over there, like, you know, they're they're because there was probably us and then like another group in the back, and uh, they're like, one of you motherfuckers here has got to have money, you know, because they kept trying to fucking uh, get you know lap dances out of us and all that shit, and uh, kept trying to pressure us. So finally, what happens, Potter? <laughs> God damn you, motherfuckers. Please don't tell me you use um, your parents' credit card, you son of a bitch. No. No, I, I remember this. Yeah, God damn it. All right, so I remember <laughs> this, this chick. I think she fucking sat on Fabian's lap. Uh-huh. And she was, she was trying to work you. Yeah. And then both you fuckers, like, threw me under the bus. And they're like, he's got money. <laughs> so she just fucking <laughs> dumps Fabian, like... Like he's trash. We're like, hey, and she jumps on my lap. How's it going? Uh-huh. Want to dance? See, we evolved during that trip too because we figured out how to get them away. Uh-huh. Just fucking sick Potter, sick him on Potter. I I literally was the only one with cash, and mm-hmm. uh, yes, I got to dance. <laughs> but he came back from that back room with the biggest fucking smile on his face. Yeah. Oh, uh, you guys rascal! <laughs> I, c- I could say that it was a terrible experience for me. I mean, shit, man! One fucking three p.m. Sunday afternoon strippers, like yeah. we're, we're not getting the A team, you know? <laughs> it's not even the B or the C team, bro. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a- what an eighteen-year-old thought was a good idea is not a good idea. <laughs> so, needless to say, after that. We still went to strip clubs. It didn't matter, and I and <laughs> and some of those times have been, uh, you know, for uh, for 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 bachelor parties, right, Potter? Uh, right, Potter. Uh, <laughs> that was the worst night of my life. <laughs> I was having to witness Potter. Oh man, what was uh, You're a bad friend, Fabian? Hey, I put him on stage. <laughs> He got put, put on, on stage. He got put on stage. They fucking you know made a big show of it. He got his. I he, got the, the the bachelor party special. He got a the, shout out to to Victor <laughs> Ramirez and his belt. Oh <laughs> man, yeah, it was like a studded <laughs> belt. They got me on stage and they're dancing and they're like, "Does anybody got a belt?" And for some reason, fucking Victor popped out. He's like, "Here you go." <laughs> he popped it out he like a like pro this, too. Like, it was like a dad fucking pop leather belt. Thank God nice. they didn't get it to buckle. Dude, those bitches fucking beat me for no tomorrow, dude. I think it was, yeah, dude. It was like the 10 lashes. Check, I think I had a welt on the side of my hip. I think that was the worst part, too. They didn't just get, get my ass, but they also got, like, my low back. Oh. I think he actually got a scene, like, made in China, fucking reverse embossed on my fucking back. That's how hard they hit me. Well, you know what? I, I, after hearing these stories about how you threw Whitey and I under the bus, I think you kind of deserved it, honestly. <laughs> I agree. You're in, your, you're in your hate of of disabled people. You know, but <laughs> Potter, hey, I, I, I thought I, nobody. You hear me? <laughs> Did you enjoy that first bachelor party, though, Potter? That was a pretty good one. Good because the good second because the second one really sucked. <laughs> yeah, it, <did. laughs> it was crap, man. We couldn't get the grill yeah. going. Uh, you know, 
Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody was all messed up off of stuff. Um, yeah. It was it was just, yeah. it was just I, terrible, you know. Yeah, I remember my my cousins tried to save it by going to a fucking pachanga or whatever. And uh, dude, I don't even remember how we got there. Yeah, or when we left, came back, but fucking, we were there for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's what you get for trying to get more than one bachelor party, Potter. <laughs> I think uh, hopefully after this whole quarantine mess is over, we got to plan one for Whitey. Hmm. Midgets. <laughs> Mid- oh my goodness. What? I'm saying after Midgets. The what? Oh midgets. <laughs> I'm saying uh yeah, after this whole quarantine mess is over, um and Whitey's uh you know uh, uh marriage goes on as planned, we're we're throwing Whitey a good bachelor party. He has no say in it. I have no say in it. They're just gonna hand me to my wife afterwards and say and- here. And this is where I, be I, dead. I really think Sosa should chime in. What should we do uh, for Whitey's bachelor party once it eventually does hit? You know what? I'm not sure what we're going to do, but that fucker's going to be lucky if he shows up to his wedding with ten fucking fingers. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> we'll, we'll give him the ring finger. <laughs> the one finger. <laughs> at, at least half of it. I mean, it's going to be a total baby. ring. <laughs> do you remember anything of your bachelor party, sir? Mine? Yeah. Uh, snippets. I remember snippets of it. <laughs> I remember my favorite part is watching him start dancing. Dude! Out of the middle of nowhere, he was just like, you were just like, grooving with everybody, I don't know. Where the fuck like did you learn to dance, man? Because yeah. everywhere we went, you just started hips going, shoulders going, and fucking... Yeah, like, go up to a group of people, and he's just like, he's fucking rocking out, you know? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember any of this. <laughs> I've never seen you, like, make those type of gyrations before, man. And it's like, all of a sudden, you know, it's bachelor party mode and you're fucking, you're over there dancing with the Mongol's daughter and shit and almost getting oh, us killed. Oh, I can remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Got a whole well, they let you have a little fun there for a few minutes. Like, all right, now we need to really get the fuck out of here before some shit I, happens. I vaguely remember that. All kinds of bikers just looking at me like I'm about to get killed. And I'm just like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! But that that one was uh, that one was fun, man. It was just kind of it was kind of crazy because I think Potter was uh was having adverse effects because he was going to pop the question right after you. <laughs> I was contemplating it before that. It wasn't for sure. It wasn't like locked in. But I think uh, you hear that, Macy. Yeah. You weren't locked in yet. Just want to point that out. You were not locked in yet. You were Potter. Blood. He just blood. said that. Two seconds ago, just letting you know. Damn. At that moment, on at that people. moment, he had second thoughts. <laughs> <Let's say we'll- laughs> he thought to himself, "Can I see her in a wheelchair?" <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was that was back when like it was crazy Rafa days, like straight out of the army, crazy fucking bender. Fucking blackout drunk crazy. <laughs> yeah, man. I think, uh, I think, you know, from the last polls, we didn't really talk about all of them because we had to cut short a little bit. I mean, we obviously learned that, you know, you're an asshole, but, um, we yeah. didn't. <laughs> yeah, this is true. We didn't get to the, the other one who, who's the worst drunk friend. And that was, that was me. I mean, <laughs> Potter won, won the poll, but the right answer was me. Right? <laughs> And I've had a, I've, I've had quite a few bad days. <laughs> oh my god! You fucking disappear. Yeah, talk about that a little, Whitey. I don't because I don't know. Like a couple of birthdays. I mean, like it's like where's Fabian? Like yo, he's at the bar down the street or something like that. It's like where the fuck did he have a chance to leave? Uh huh. But yeah, you, I mean, you just like you, you find ways to to move. <laughs> But I think what's funny is that the stories that I hear afterwards, like, you know, I start fucking calling random, random people, uh, like, uh, like if it's a black dude, I'll be like, shut up, Antonio Tarver or something like that, right? Oh my God. Yeah. That did happen. <laughs> that really did happen. Just like that. You know, it was, uh, we were at a restaurant. Uh, oh, go on, Wayne. Uh, we were at a restaurant in a booth and like, he was pretty toasted at that point. Um, 
He kept ordering shots, though, and I'm, I'm telling the waiter, whatever, hey, bring him shots, but bring him shots of water. He won't know the difference. You know? <laughs> and that's what he, that's exactly what he did. He was just, like, pounding shots of water, mm-hmm. thinking he was getting drunker and drunker. And then, and then um, the waiter, nice guy, you know, like, this black dude, he goes, hey, Antonio Tarver or whatever, can I blah, 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 blah? And I'm like, oh, my God, or whatever, like, somehow, like, being white or whatever, like, <laughs> they're going to blame me or whatever for his actions. <laughs> I probably had just finished watching an Antonio Tarver fight, you know, so it's kind of fair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I want to, I think the, the the funny thing is, is that I don't think anybody, like, because I think at some point, once I'm fucking too bad and, you know, not movable, <laughs> there's nobody that does it like Whitey, that knows how to get me going. Right? Like, what's, what's one trick... True. What's one trick that Whitey has used to get me up and moving? I think Whitey. it's the... Uh, you, you can't do it, Fabian. There's no way you can get to the car. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you gotta challenge him. I think you I, you pointed at Macy and you're like, she's gonna beat you to the car. And I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I told, I told Whitey, right, I'm so, like, just start running. So, I think what Fabian's talking about right there, this one time after his birthday, on his birthday First we went to Brass Monkey, we had some shots, and then we went to the beach, and we were still drinking. The Fabian's, like, doing, like, fucking cartwheels and four rolls, and then, like, like he's gonna start fighting, warming up for a fight. But he's just really drunk, and we're trying to get him to the car, and we're trying to, like, pick him up, and that's not happening on, on sand. And why he's like, I got this. <laughs> Fabian, Macy's gonna beat you to the car. Yeah. You gonna let her beat you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was he was not mobile. <laughs> not at all. You just you try to pick him up just by one arm and you you yourself are just sinking deeper and deeper into the sand. It's like a sandbagging us. So what happens then, after uh, the challenge? You just, both you eventually got to the car. You made it, for sure. <laughs> Took you a few seconds. Re- you got there yeah. after Macy. I just remember him springing up and start, like, running to the car or whatever. All of a sudden, I was like, fucking work. <laughs> it did work. Whitey's mind tricks were fucking incredible. Because once Whitey, ch- like, challenges, hey, she's going to beat you to the car. I started hearing that fucking triumphant, you know, race music. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you know? That marathon song. I'm, you know, just, yeah, like, yeah. It motivated me, you know? But. I think that, I think that was Venice Beach, yeah. if I'm correct. If I. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. I don't remember. The other birthday was more is more uh, memorable to me though, Fabian. You know, we were in a what was it Arcadia or something like that, okay. Old Town Arcadia, and uh, I guess he used to go like back and forth working for these two clubs. Uh huh. And so when we got there, you were hanging out with uh, Matt and Whitey. You guys are drinking, and for some reason, Matt had this like awesome idea apparently to get you drunk early. Oh. Mm-hmm. So there you are, just. Pounding shots left and right. Go across the street. You're like, hey, what's up? They they all buy you shots because you're usually the bouncer. And then you come back, you're still pounding shots. And then you get to a booth and you start slamming the table. Just your Ric Flair comes out. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Another shot. And they're like, dude, shh, they're going to kick us out. Woo! Next thing you know, you're on the floor and um, you turn into a sprinkler. Oh, barfing left and right. I blame Matt I would like to say for that. that was the only it time. And, Matt's fault. and I also blame Matt because I told, I, I, <laughs> I told him, had, I told him, do not, you know, under any circumstance, you know, give me beers because beers are heavy. I don't like beer. I don't throw up. You know, it's just liquor. I'm fine. But this motherfucker, his, this cheap ass motherfucker, wanted to get the, you know. <laughs> The dollar beers, remember Whitey? You get one yeah. beer. You know, he, yeah. So he wanted to get like the you know two dollar, three dollar beers or whatever. Um, so he wouldn't have to get me that much. And I think that's what did it because I usually that's the only time I can ever remember throwing up. I mean, unless no bullshit. What did it is the twenty one shots that you told me you had beforehand. Like at some point he looks over to me. It was and he goes it Whitey. Was a ridiculous amount of like shots he, he was doing along he told with me, beer. He, he goes Whitey. And 21 shots or whatever. And then 
first and then I think Ric Flair came out, and I told Matt, because Matt had just showed up. I think he showed up later, <laughs> and he was doing something else. Oh, Matt was there the whole time. He might have disappeared for a minute, but... And I, I told him, I go, dude, he already did, like, this many shots or something like that. Like, chill out for a little tiny bit. So what does Matt do is the first thing he does, like, the second that I finish telling him that, he goes right over to the bar to order more drinks for Fabian. <laughs> so the funny part was, there's a booth in this bar, right? And Fabian's on this booth, like, we get him to kind of, like, we're kind of getting him to mellow out or we're towards the end of the night, and, and it's about last call, and we're like, fuck, we get, now we got to get him to the car. It was and, still uh, early, lady. It was still early. It was, like, not even 10. Oh, man. Yeah, your, your night did end early. That's right. So, anyway, Fabian slides off this booth and pushes the tables that were on the booth away from him and, like, pushes them out to the dance floor. <laughs> so, here's Fabian, like, on the floor. And I tell Matt, I go, this is your fucking fault. Like, take care of it, you know? Like, so he goes, I got this or whatever. And he puts his arms, like, around you, like, to pick you up from behind or whatever. And, like, he, like, underhooks your arms. And he cups his hands for whatever reason. And I'm looking straight at you, both from, like, the front end. And, like, I see his hands cup. And you just, like, lean forward and you retch in his hands. You're like, <laughs> And I was like, that was the night Matt got what he deserved for, like, fucking poking the bear, you know? Uh huh. That, I mean, that's poetic justice right there, you know? I had, I had a Green Day shirt that I used to love or whatever that just was, like, covered in vomit after that whole night or whatever. And I was like, it, that shirt's retired. Somehow, somehow, you guys got into to the back room and then you got a whole bunch of guys had a carry thing and out. I think, I think like the owner, six people, the fucking had, owner took. The owner told us to get him the fuck out of there. That was, I'm pretty sure those were the exact words. We're like, get him the fuck on out of here. We're like, through the back. Mm -hmm. We took you through the kitchen and then out the back door and threw you into your brother's car. <laughs> <sighs> Not my finest moment. <laughs> you know what, though? I was, was the worst. I was going to say, why do you, we got to ambush Matt. I've been wanting him on this fucking podcast for a while now. God damn it. He just, he shows up and he told me the last time I saw him, if he ever hears this, he goes, he goes, I'm that friend that you don't see for a few years. And then he just kind of like shows up. <laughs> when was the last time you saw him or spoke with him? I would say it was like a year ago. That's, that's you, Whitey. For me, I think he's probably been, I don't know, maybe five years, maybe something like that. Three or four he years. He gave me a number. We should dial it right now. <laughs> you should ambush him. <laughs> Put it on the damn podcast. <laughs> Like, literally, like, right now, record it. <laughs> nah, it's probably some baby mama's phone now. Hey, even funnier. And I'm going to get ambushed. <laughs> Where is Matt? The, she's going to be calling me all the time. Are you his dad? So what I'm hearing is you're going to dial that. Right now. Yes. <laughs> we're doing it. We're doing it. We're waiting yes, on it. Yes, we're right doing it. it. Should we do it? I mean, I think ambush. I have number. Ambush. 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 Yes. But how are you going to hear him? Put uh, put the you, phone up you, to the... Put it on speaker and put it up to the mic. Is I she, don't think I have his new number. Hold on. He's holding out on Dude, these have, guys. Have any of you ever tried to keep up with Fabian's drinking? Like, one for one? Oh, man. No, never. It's impossible. All Lady. right, so I, I found it. What, what was that? What was the question? Sorry, I was looking at uh, Have you ever tried to go one for one with Fabian on drinks? I think we have gone one for one before on drinks. Here's like, the we, thing. We fucking held down parties. I was going to say, look, some of us are heavyweight drinkers, and that's natural. <laughs> you know, it, I just got more mass. Some of you <laughs> are are not quite uh, as heavyweight drinkers. I would maybe venture to say lightweights. I don't know who the uh -oh. light, who's the lightest weight here, uh, Potter or Sosa? I would say Sosa is probably, Sosa's probably the, the lighter light. weight because uh, uh, I've seen Potter fucking drink a lot of fucking booze with me. So, <laughs> but Whitey is honestly, I I'll give, much with Sosa. I, I'm going to give Whitey the the title here. He is a, the hardest person to get drunk. Really? This son of a bitch! You'll give him sh drink after drink after drink. I've only seen him really like bad, maybe twice, right? Uh, yeah. And that was once when my brother came back from the army, kept telling, him, "Let's go get a beer, Whitey. Let's get a beer. Let's get a beer." And oh my god, two dollar beer night. <laughs> so you're telling me that that hand job he gave me, he was completely sober for that? Yes. That just makes it fucking weird. <laughs> Wait, what? The, the <laughs> one where we put a little bit of vanilla ice cream on it, and cherries. Yeah, it was, it was it was amazing. Shit, I felt refreshed. <laughs> it was a bad friends podcast. Number twenty five or whatever. 
I don't know. I don't want to do that podcast. Um, <laughs> but have you, <laughs> have you found Matt's number? I did find Matt's number. Let's ambush this son of a bitch. I feel weird. Somebody weird's going to answer this fucking phone because he never has the same goddamn phone. Just, okay. Just say wrong number. I'm just going to say, is Matt's, is Matt there? Let's see. All right. Here it's dialing. Put on speaker. We can't hear it. Come on. Uh, not in service. Of course that's Matt's phone. That's what I said. Like, I mean, it's either somebody weird or whatever, or not Matt. That's all right. We'll, we'll get that son of a bitch at some point. He wanted, I actually got word that he wanted to be on the podcast, but he got cold feet after he heard that Whitey was going to be on. <laughs> he fucking hates me. That's why. No, because... No, I don't know. I don't like, know. That's maybe, why he changed his number. Maybe he thought he couldn't be as entertaining as uh, the White Wonder. We don't have any Matt stories we've told either. We should probably... Oh, there's so many. <laughs> there are so Matt. Many. That could be a whole fucking episode of its own. <laughs> but yeah, you, you know, uh, Sosa was getting at the... Have you ever tried to go drink for drink with me? Because I think there was a failed attempt that he had once. Oh, it Is was that, fucking horrible. It was catastrophic. Is that what you were getting at? Yes, yes, I remember. I vaguely remember that. I remember saying, I think I could do this, and then regretting it quickly thereafter, and then <laughs> lights out. <laughs> lights out, yeah. Time was lost. It was at that Redneck Bar, right? The red Redwood something or other? Oh, yeah, yeah. Red Roof Inn. Yeah. But in then, West Covina, right? Yeah, but then it or, turned into like a real like Nazi bar afterwards. Yeah, it did. It was awesome. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I don't I don't think we're welcome there anymore. No, definitely not. Maybe, maybe Whitey. I, remember, I, I think <laughs> maybe not. Whitey, no. Maybe maybe Potter when he wears his blue life shirt. <laughs> did he say it's a did he say it's a Nazi restaurant now? Yeah, they they Yeah, have, they have pancake swats because it's awesome. <laughs> 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 oh my god. But yeah, we, we, you know, I think the, maybe the only one who keep up drink for drink is Whitey for sure. Kudos to you, Whitey. gave Whitey Everclear for him to get drunk. Yeah, yeah, that was bad. That was real bad. I That was the time I lost time. He didn't even finish the drink we made him <laughs> of Everclear. And, sure, well, let's backtrack here. We're, we're trying to get Whitey drunk. It's his birthday. I think we were having some beers earlier for like lunchtime. Still drinking some more. Comes down to like eight, nine o'clock. We're giving him shots, mm-hmm. and then finally, like, fuck this. Let's let's take it up a notch, and we bust out some Everclear, and we try to mix it with like some like Gatorade and like some Powerade and some Coke, and nothing <laughs> fucking cuts Everclear. Okay, nothing. It, oh. And we told drink this, Whitey. You have to drink this. It's your birthday. God damn it! So he starts chugging a little bit. I don't, I'm not even sure he got to halfway and. Next thing you know, he's like, dude, fuck Charter. Charter's the worst fucking assholes. They always cheated in wrestling. Fuck Charter. <laughs> they're just like looking at each other like, what school are you talking about? Who's Charter? And, fuck Charter. Yeah, and this is how I knew, you know, I used to believe that whole myth about when you're drunk, you tell the absolute truth, which is bullshit, because I've told some of the best elaborate lies as a drunk. <laughs> but I remember Whitey, uh, you know, bold face lied. He's like, I won every single wrestling match I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the next line. That was the next big line. Yeah, I'm like, Whitey, oh, I, I don't think that's true, Whitey. No, it's true. I beat Charter. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Whitey, I didn't, I didn't even win every match I ever had. No, oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> he was convinced. <laughs> He was convinced that he won every single match he ever had. To this day, I don't know what charter means. I think, by the way, <laughs> like, what does that even mean? And then you started like cussing out Adam Sandler. You're like, "Fuck Adam Sandler!" I remember getting angry at his blue suit. <laughs> Some weird and shit. Then, it, then it's all so hazy from there. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's where I blacked out. I think is is yelling at Sandler. He did it. <laughs> All right, well, I wanted to move on real quick, and this is just a quick little snippet I did for social media. It says I didn't do anything too elaborate this time, but I put on there, is as you get older, is it hard to keep up with, with old friends? And what do you guys think the percentage was for that, for yes and no? 60-40, yes. 
Probably closer to 80. That's it's, it's easy to keep up with old friends now. That it's harder or, or easier? It's easier. So you would say 80% said that that they keep up with old friends? Close, close, close to 80. So it's easier to keep up now. Okay. What, do you, what do you think, Wadi? I think about, about 70% probably don't keep up with old friends. Yeah, so the, the total was about... I think it was 71% that said, yes, it's hard. To, as you get older, it's harder to keep up with old friends. Um, we had a comment on there from Hector Aguilar of the Cool Kids Table podcast. It says, uh, you make time for what is what is important. If friendships are important, you'll find a way. Um, I agree with that. You know, I think, uh, I don't know, man, but I see it a lot of ways. Because for us, um, you know, we've known each other so long, but it's kind of, it's kind of hard syncing up all together, no? Wouldn't you say? Yeah, it takes a it takes a conscious fucking effort to do this, man. It's not something you just like swing off the back end anymore. Yeah, you know, and I think especially you know with you guys now that have the the little ones, you know, it's now is the formative ages, you know, and so maybe if your kid's like fucking eight years old or whatever, you have a little bit more time to you know do stuff. But when your kid's like one, two, three years old, forget about it, right? Dude, I'm just fucking chasing after this kid. Hey, don't put that in your mouth. Don't do this. Don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, man, I think uh, the one of the one of the reasons I really appreciate the podcast is uh, it's a cool little tool for us to catch up. You know, um, gives us an excuse. You know, um, yeah, for sure. I mean, shit. I think there's been times where we're almost like maybe a year or more where like we don't say a goddamn thing to each other, right? It's not out of malice or anything. It's not. Out of intent, it's just fucking life, you know? Yeah. I can agree it's probably hard to, like, physically meet up with you guys, but, uh, you know, you guys are just a phone call or a text message away mm-hmm. nowadays just just to see if you guys are okay or fucking still alive or what was that restaurant you just went to type of thing, but, fuck, dude, probably before 2000, like, cell phones didn't really exist for us. It was, like, out of after high school, fucking... Peace. See you in ten years, maybe mm-hmm. at the reunion. Well, we saw how that fucking reunion went last time I ever. Well, put- everyone's on social. Everyone's on social media, so they still kind of like, oh yeah, there's baby in there at the. Hey, that's the last time that bar. I ever put on any put it, put together any effort for any of those ungrateful miscreant fucks. You know, I went and got the got, goddamn venue right. I arranged for them to close down for a day for us. And everybody's like, "Oh yeah, I'll do it." And then push comes to shove, uh, they don't do a, they don't do a goddamn thing. We have to settle for a brewery. Fuck you guys, class of two thousand four. Suck my ass two <laughs> times with the straw, a fucking thick straw, and and you can fucking blend it with the water that comes out of the goddamn bidet. I'll make you an ass juice fucking you know smoothie right there. Fuck you. I wasn't <laughs> there, so um, I'm not included in the bunch. That that was the fucking problem, Whitey. You have to get the ass juice smoothie now. <laughs> that doesn't sound yeah, good. That doesn't sound good at all. I didn't like. I, I was trying. Dosa to- was there. No, I was there. there. And I was, I was there. fucking doing yeah. finals, and I was like, you know what? Fuck it, I'm going. <laughs> why? Do, why didn't you go to that half-ass fucking reunion? I don't remember what. When was it? A couple years ago. Well, I mean, it was, it was a ten-year reunion. Was, <laughs> so. <laughs> so it was 14. 28. I don't know. So yeah, like six years ago. Yeah, 2014. Um, Why? When did we graduate? I was probably Whitey? just working a lot. I was probably just working too much. I don't know. But I mean, I I, I think that yeah, that's that that's a good point. It's, just, it's it's tough to kind of keep up, um, even though we have all the fucking tools to do so, you know. But I think what I enjoy about it is that we could just fucking pick up wherever the fuck we left off and just still kind of have at it and laugh at the same stupid bullshit over and over again. You know, the same story told, just spin it in a new direction, you know? But we got to do that again, man. We got to fucking, once this whole quarantine thing's over, you know, Whitey, we're coming for you, your your bachelor party. Cause I, we're I, coming for you. I mean, unless I go and fucking, you know, find a fucking, I don't know, a mail order bride or something, uh, maybe to get their documents, you know? Uh, I think we we have, we have to just uh, we have to we have to push for Whitey's uh, uh, bachelor party first, so it's gonna happen. Load them up oh. on some edibles and just <laughs> eat tons of liquor throughout. Maybe we'll get lucky. Well, like a hangover type of event, still like a lion or a tiger or something. You know? 
Oh, God. I can only imagine what the hell you're going to do. We'll dress him up as Joe Exotic. Oh, my God. And we'll throw him down the Vegas Strip. (laughs) We'll dress him as Joe Exotic. I have that picture still. (laughs) You've been doing a lot of good stuff. And he'll be drunk, and he'll look like Joe Exotic, and we'll just push him in the wrong direction, you know, and he'll, well, wrong direct, where he shouldn't be going. Where we want him to go for our amusement, just sit back and relax and enjoy the show. There we go. The last thing I want to do before we close out, um, as as usual, is uh, I want to talk about the next episode, and I've got a, I've actually got a good, good lineup for the next uh five episodes or so. It's pretty pretty packed already. Um, but for the next episode, I have, uh, and Potter, this one should kind of resonate with you because you've been bringing up people with special needs. But this is a cool story. I actually have uh, a high school senior who has autism, uh, and he started his own website and podcast called autismrocksandrolls.com, uh, something like that. And he's going to talk about, you know, uh, the stigma behind, you know, being autistic um, and how that he's kind of, you know, try to make himself limitless um, or at least work beyond what people expect him to do um, to get his fucking podcast out there. You know, he talks about rock music and pro wrestling and shit. I thought that was fucking cool, man. Um, have you guys exper- experienced you know, uh, maybe family members or, you know, kids that, you know, from friends or anything like that. Um, I think, why do you have like an autistic cousin, right? I do have an autistic cousin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what has that experience been like? Well, I haven't seen them in years, but, um, it was interesting. I don't know. Like, um, I didn't really understand autism before I, um, there, like, for example, um, my eyes were kind of opened. I, I, I had seen him. He was playing in the, uh, in the kitchen, and he had this, like, puzzle that you build on the floor with these giant puzzle pieces, because it wasn't very old, you know, he was, like, four or five or something like that. Mm-hmm. But, um, he was at the point where he should be talking, and he's just, he doesn't say anything, he's just kind of moving around doing his thing. And, uh, no, it was the other kid, that's right, okay, so his brother was building this puzzle on the floor, and the brother couldn't figure out where the puzzle pieces were going. Mm-hmm. And the kid's just standing there, or whatever, like, watching, or whatever, like, because he doesn't talk or anything, right, he's just, like, looking... And uh, the kid had a few pieces together or whatever, and, but the, the kid who's a little older or whatever, like, he can't figure it out. All of a sudden, like, after watching for, like, five minutes or so, the kid goes up and, and he just places all the pieces in the right spot, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, so that kind of, like, helped me understand how the brain worked there, you know? Like, uh, he's on a different level or whatever that we are, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Have you guys... Uh had maybe family members or you ever experienced, uh, you know, closely, uh, anything with, uh, with, with an autistic kid or an autistic adult at all? Isaac, besides your hate crimes, <laughs> any other experience? Um, nobody in my family is autistic. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have had like two customers. I don't know what they are. I just know they're, they're special. Especially this one lady, and the best thing I can do is just try to like. <laughs> I can't hold it in, man. Fuck! What the hell? <laughs> you keep digging the hole. <laughs> you can't even go five minutes. <laughs> You're like, oh, I don't know what she is. She's something. <laughs> <laughs> That's him, guys. It's not us. That's him. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm gonna skip you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <Yeah. laughs> the second time you brought me to tears on this show. Oh I'm man! I've never been there. Even went up. So <laughs> you you've been skipped, Potter. It's okay. <laughs> About so is any anything that can beat that. <laughs> Nothing can beat that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I have could ever beat that. Um, you know, I've, you know, working in a hospital, you, you know, people come in, they have different special needs, ranging from perfectly normal to, you know, quadriplegic and everything in between. I've dealt with autistic people before. It's 
you know, just everybody just wants to be treated like a human being, yep. decent human being. You know, show some respect, know that they have limitations in some areas, and try to make it work. Just don't send them potters. <laughs> I, I have no words, <laughs> sir. I have no words. I hope next time we don't have a story like that to tell. I really hope there's yeah. none buried at this point. You mean a new one? A new I, feel story? Like, I feel like we need to make a shirt that says we have some they have something. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I, <laughs> no, it's just gotta be it's gotta be Potter's face with the thumbs up and the, I don't know what she had, she had something. <laughs> All right, well, that'll do it for this episode. You know, I think we'll keep it nice and short. Um, for these episodes, you know, it's to, again, to me, it's just we're shooting the shit. You know, this one wasn't very, uh, it wasn't very, uh, uh, you know, mapped out or anything like that. But I like the free-flowing format. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll keep doing these. What do you guys think? Every 10 episodes or so feel, feel like, uh, feel right? Yeah, 10 episodes sounds good at a minimum, I guess. Yeah, man, I'm down for anything like that. Sounds cool. <laughs> and the next one, if we do it uh, for episode 30, should be like on the heels of the election, I think. So we might have some oh, politically <laughs> charged messages there. I was expecting more of that from Potter this time around. Before we go, Potter, you got any uh, any right-wing rhetoric to spew? Please, please enlighten me what you have learned off of YouTube lately. I don't got nothing, dude. I don't, I don't dig that fucking deep into the shit. Who's Potter? Whose lives matter? Everybody. <laughs> Any specific color? Nope, oh, shouldn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all I know is that for this election, I'm writing in Bozo the Clown. That's what I'm doing. Fuck it. <laughs> so they'll so they'll count it as Trump. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus. But she mails it in, they might put Joe down. Say what? I'm sorry. Say that one again. I said, if, I said if he mails it in, they might put Joe down. Yes, because mail in ballots are, you know, ripe for conspiracy and no, whatever. I don't know. What? We should have gotten into this a lot more. <laughs> on, our, on our next podcast fight <laughs> Politics Amongst Friends. Real quick. What what do y'all think about this whole mail in ballot thing? And I, I just opinions from whoever. Uh, I'd say we save Isaac for for last, or you want to go first, Isaac? I'll go last. Fuck it, you guys go. Whitey, you go first. No, I'm sitting out of, out of politics this time around. Then like the last four years have been fucking terrible. I don't know, Fabian. Fabian, what are your thoughts about mail in mail in voting or not mail in voting? I don't give a shit to be honest with you. <laughs> because I fucking hate that we only have two options. That's not a choice. Two options is not a choice. I hate this whole two-party system um, to be 100% honest. And I hate to be that pessimistic asshole that, you know, in California, your vote doesn't matter kind of thing. I'm at that point for this election. It doesn't fucking matter. You know, um, we're going to, you know, we're going to give all the electoral votes to Biden. You know, it is what it is. Um yep. I don't like either candidate. Um, I really don't have a fucking pony in the race at this point, to be honest with you. On on a different note, you know, I wish we could vote in person, I think. But also, I've always kind of been, you know, I've always kind of wondered, what the hell would the problem be, you know, uh, if we voted and had to show our IDs? I've never seen a problem with that. Right? You had voted and, and had what? Like, okay... It, you, you know how uh, we're not required to show IDs when we vote? Oh, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't see a problem a problem with showing an ID when you vote, right? I mean, you have to show your ID for everything else, no? Yeah. No, I agree with that. Uh-huh. All right, Potter, what do you I, think? Kill it for that, us that, here. That's not that either. Um, well, I think that, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, first since I'm the healthcare professional here. Um, I think that if you don't really take the necessary precautions, uh, I think that uh, voting centers can become hotbeds for outbreaks. You know, it takes one person to sneeze on their hand, put their hand on the stupid uh, pencil that pokes the holes in there, mm-hmm. and then the next person grabs that, pokes the holes in there, you know, touches their phone, they get a phone call, they put mm-hmm. that thing next to their face, and now, you know, 
you're just going to spread it. So that being said, it's really difficult to prevent, you know, massive outbreaks because of that. However, if we were like to sanitize the, the, the voting booths after every single voter or, you know, take necessary precautions, social distancing, fucking making masks, you know, mandatory when you go vote, you know, maybe we'd have a shot at doing it in person, but I don't know. I think that's a bridge too far. So, you know, and, and I best. think just to kind of jump on that though, nobody's really fucking doing their part in the whole social distancing thing much anymore. You know, you go like, no. Uh, I went to Big Bear uh, the other weekend. That shit was packed more than I've ever seen ever. You know, um, mm. people were, you know, even in the supermarket, it was just fucking, you know, people right next to each other. You talk about, you know, uh, sanitizing things, uh, supermarkets, like wa- even like uh, throughout the whole pandemic, Walmart has been fucking packed. Sam's Club has been fucking packed, you know, yeah. and, and there's been no distancing there's no um, sanitizing of the fucking the little ATM machines after every use, you know? I think, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. We're just kind of in a fucking hole where it's not going to get any better because all the goddamn, you know, lawmakers are going to keep, uh, you know, keep things the way they are, keep things closed until we see some sort of fucking uh, improvement. But I don't think we're going to improve anytime soon. I think uh, we're we're experiencing exactly what the world sees us as, as a stereotypical dumb American, and we're uh, we're really living up to that expectation right now during this pandemic. Sadly, yeah, I've I've got a fucking international guest uh, coming up soon. I'm gonna ask him like, "Hey, are we fucking morons?" You know? <laughs> yes, yes, you are. <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, Fuck, it's sad. So, okay, so that's my my spiel on the, on the voting booth. Uh, you know, mail in ballots, not the, I mean, not what I would want to do, but I mean, give me a better alternative. That's very secure, right? Uh, I mean, at least if you're doing mail in ballots, you can't, you don't have to really, I don't know, do you really have to worry about the, you know, foreign entity hacking into your mainframe and putting up a winner, whoever they deem is worthy or whoever they want to see in power? I don't know. I mean, uh, if if uh, Putin's really got the vaccine, uh, I'll let him pick whoever the fuck he wants. Dude, oh my god! Oh fuck! Don't even bring that. Oh my fucking hey, god! He injected his daughter, all right? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he fucking did. <laughs> oh my fucking god! You you mean to tell me you don't think he's got the vaccine? Dude, I think they're injecting you with fucking salt water and telling you, "All right, get to go, guy. Get out there. <laughs> go back to work. Get the economy running again." Go wrestle fucking bear now. <laughs> you mean that, they're not injecting themselves with vodka, dude? That is fucking ludicrous. All right, what's the right wing rhetoric on this, Potter? I don't think it's the right wing rhetoric. Um, of course not. Like, of course you, you don't. Wait, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. wait. Let me, what a right winger would let me, say. Let me speak my opinion. What is uh, what is Q? Opinions, like what does QAnon say? have to say? Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know who that is, but like. Like you said, Fabian, uh, Sands Club and Walmart is, is fucking packed. Yep. Um, you know, I think maybe back in like, I want to say like May, I used to re- still remember like maybe going to the market and like after like somebody used a credit card, you know, a keypad, mm. I would see like a Target associate like spray that shit down real quick and mm. then wipe it so that way you could use it next. But I just went the other day and they did not give a fuck. Yeah, they got the little plexiglass up and, you know, keep that away. But, like, shit's crowded. Before, they used to be like, all right, only 100 people into the store at once. Mm-hmm. You know, all right, five people left. All right, five more come in. You know, what what would be any different from um, from doing, you know, in, in-person voting? Right. Maybe so, they just got to open up a, a high school. So, so I could chime in on that if you'd like me to. Um, what, what, what would be the difference? Okay, so here, here's the thing with my limited nursing knowledge that I know about. Wait, wait, wait. Right? That, that, that's the H- hang on. To sanitize it. All right. H- hang on. Hang on. Let, let, me, let me go. Let me go. All right. Um, I, I work with COVID patients all the time. I'm in an enclosed, isolated room with them, right? That means that it's, gotcha. what, like a fucking seven by seven room. You know, everybody's been to the emergency room, I'm assuming. You have a, a gurney there and you have enough, you know, a room for a monitor and some IV poles. So it's very enclosed. Um, 
I haven't gotten sick yet because I'm very fucking religious about wearing my N95 mask and my eye protection. Mm-hmm. So I'm always having that shit on. Not not even in the nursing station I take it off. It's always on. So I haven't gotten sick yet. Uh, that is because the virus is being spread by droplets, right? And that means that like your spit or your cough, it travels about six feet and then it dies down. The virus isn't really living on surfaces that for that long. Right. So, for example, like if I'm talking right now and all that and I have the virus and I'm talking on my on top of my desk and then you come in half an hour later and you eat off of this desk, as long as you're not licking the counter, you have a pretty good chance that you're not going to get it. You know what I mean? Um, so you got to think about, you know, a voting booth. A voting booth is, you know very small, very secluded for obvious reasons, not privacy. That means that it could be a hotbed for that virus to just, some dude just breathing on something continuously for a little while, and then the next person comes in and picks something up and then infects themselves. So you're talking about like a concentration, the viral load being concentrated in a small space. That That's the, you know, kind of the fear there. And if we lived in a perfect world, yeah, somebody would come in and sanitize the shit out of it after every use. I mean, I advocate for that, but I don't know how realistic that is. If it's that important, you think they'd find a way? Um, do it. Seems like it'd be pretty important. It, it is super important, it's and not I'll, just I'll the tell you. It's presidential election that you're doing. It's also other things for your, you know, for your state, your your city, and, right. and your your county that you're also going to be voting for too. Yeah, but I mean, just for example, at the hospital, if we have a COVID patient, like we have to wait an hour after that patient leaves, like, to clean it, just so we keep the guy that's cleaning the room safe. You know what I mean? So are you going to be waiting an hour after every single voter? How realistic is that? How about if I ask you this question? Shoot. How, how possible could it be that, uh, that they might, if they were to steal some votes, maybe not in L.A. County, maybe in other states, maybe just not deliver them? What are, what are possibilities of, like, that happening? Never happening, maybe happening, or definitely happening. I can actually speak to that real quick. That shit happens even with in-person elections. My brother was working uh, the polling station um, last last uh, general election, and it was a shit show because it's mostly like you know angry old church ladies who don't know what the fuck they're doing. So so many things get lost, right? So whether it's mail in or or in person, like. It's all human error, you know? And I, I think they, that shit happens anyway. If it were up to me in a perfect world, they'd fucking figure out a way to... I know, and this is going to leave us susceptible to fucking, you know, uh, 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 what do you call it? To hackers and shit. But what, I mean, we fucking put our bank accounts, you do the whole little, uh, you know, th- uh, thumb scan or your fucking retina scan or whatever. That shit would be, like, ideal. Everybody can vote from, like, a fucking you know, a, a device, a trusted device or something like that. I get it, the implications of it being fucking hacked, but there's got to be a better way. You know, we got to find better solutions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Heads absolutely. or tails? Heads or tails, anyone? Heads or tails works. I like that one. <laughs> uh, Look, all I'm saying is probably in uh, more like the swing states or like some of the smaller ones, uh, it could probably become more and more common that maybe, you know, Something like, oh, we didn't get fucking the city of West Covina's votes in. Fuck it, whatever. Just this is what the total was. I feel like that could be more of a possibility. But are you than, saying that? Uh, are, you, are you saying that it was intentional or that it was your human error and ineptitude? Not sure. It could maybe both situations. Maybe they thought they got West Covina, you know, West Covina's votes in, but they really didn't. Maybe you know, one of you know, one of three boxes didn't make it. For the whole city. All I know is with our electoral vote system, it really doesn't matter who wins or right, loses because they can here, choose here, to vote or not vote. How many of you guys still get mail from uh, from people that used to live at your address? Very rarely. Never. Yeah. I get that shit a lot. I still okay, get from, like the guy that used to live here. From who though? How do you hey. know he's not still living there? It's like yeah. Uh, if, I owed a sh- <laughs> if I owed a shit ton of money, I wouldn't tell the bank where I'm going to move to either. <laughs> The guy's named Rusty Shackelford. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm just saying that it's not perfect. 
Nothing and I think, there, I, I, I think there, there's more room for error. I think there could be a way that they could try to do it in person. But uh, it seems like they don't even want to have that conversation. Yeah, in person would be great. Even dropping it off in a mailbox, but uh, they started putting locks on mailboxes and shit. What about um, that? So, so what if they dropped it off at a central collection agency? Not even the post think. office. Just instead of like going in and punching cards, you drop it off at the voting center. How about you just drop it off in your mailbox? I, I was thinking that too. Like, <laughs> why, why do we fucking need to bring mailboxes into this shit? Somebody has to know somebody with a mailbox. Can I put this in your mailbox? That's all you have to tell somebody. In the but here, here's the thing too, though. Look, mail-in voting has been a thing for such a very long time. No? I've always voted by mail. I'm, I mean, am I wrong here? Have you guys voted by mail before? No, I've never right. voted by mail. So, I've only voted at uh, Mountain View Park over here. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm all right. So, I'm uh, as it might shock you all, I do listen to Ben Shapiro. <gasps> oh, no. The fuck you say? No way! No <laughs> way! I know, right? And uh, one of the things he he quoted about, I forget what county it was, but they said to do mail in voting, you can't mail in until three days before the election. Mm, and just, the post office. Are we the just post taking office, at straws uh, right now? I don't think. I don't think that's true. I've sent I didn't it make that fucking rule up. Did, was that Fabian? I've sent it in way before three days before the election. So the, it, it was for a different state. The state said for a, a president, I believe it said for like a presidential election, you can't send it in but, until but Isaac, three days Isaac, before. How, how is that any different than telling people, hey, you got, you, you don't even get the day off to go vote. You got to go find time during your work day to go vote, right? And now you're leaving that open for an asshole employer to say, hey, you know what, asshole, how about if you leave right now, I'm going to fire you. Again, it's an imperfect system. The point I was getting at was that the post office said, we can't guarantee, if you do that, if you did sending it out just before, three days before the election, we cannot guarantee that it will get there in time to be counted for the election. Mm-hmm. But you can't, you can't guarantee that people are going to go out there and vote in person right now because we don't have mandated day off to go vote that that sucks too it should be so what i'm trying to say is that any way you cut it it's an imperfect system i mean i'm not trying to say uh, i hear what you're saying i hear i hear what you're saying yes but i'm trying to say how is that any different than what's going on right now like you're trying to you're you're trying to compare this as in oh this is completely broken to our perfect beautiful system that we have right now it's it's a shitty broken system and it's a shitty it has been a shitty broken system and, for a while. And, and check this out. Look, the part, the, the reason why I mentioned earlier that I would prefer to have to show my ID when I vote is because I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but when you go vote, right, all you have to do is you have to tell them your address. And then sometimes you could even just point it out on a fucking sheet. And be like, oh, yeah, that's my address. Right. You don't have to show any goddamn proof. Right. You just say, that's my address. That's my name. And they give you all your little forms to go vote. Right. It's fla- mm-hmm. it's flawed as fuck, you know. And I would back that up. I would require an ID. Why the fuck not? If you don't take the time to go get an ID, if you don't care enough to go get an ID, why would you care enough about who leads the country? You know what I'm saying? Do your fucking part as a, as a citizen. So I, I can get behind that one, David. Absolutely. All right. So then I'm gonna make it more extreme. We should take tests in order to vote. If you're too fucking stupid, oh, Jesus Christ, to vote. <laughs> if you're too fucking stupid to vote. You don't know who your senators are and your, you know, all, all your local government. Fuck you. You got to take a test. If you fail, you're not voting for shit. Kiss my ass. <laughs> Give you some more of that ass juice smoothie. Uh, uh, I'll take it a step further and say you need to own like five acres of land. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it a step further and be like, let me go get my swatches. Hmm. You know, no, a little too, a little too shady for you to vote. Yeah. <laughs> no, man. You, you start. That's a slippery slope, my friend. I mean, you gotta at least change the voting age. Eighteen? Come on, you don't know shit at eighteen. Yeah, I think that's the, the reason they did that is because of Vietnam. You, did you guys know that? I had no idea. During the draft, they were drafting eighteen-year-olds, and it was found unconstitutional that you were sending eighteen-year-olds to go fucking die, but they weren't old enough to vote. So either change the fucking draft to be over twenty-one, or you know fucking deal with it. Mm. And I, I would be down to change the draft to 21 and 18 year old doesn't know dick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's another conversation. Any more uh, right wing rhetoric from anybody? Potter? 
<laughs> what, what else did Ben tell you? What did Shapiro say? <laughs> I'm just saying that there's a... Uh, I think there's more room for error with just doing mail-in voting only. Isaac what? is worried about fuckery going on with the election system. And I, I dig it. He's a concerned citizen. What you should do but... is you should go out there in your little orange hat and check <laughs> all the mail-in ballots to make sure that they're voting for Trump like you are. And... <laughs> Uh, and just make sure that the world is right, you know? And Whitey can follow you with the shotgun, uh, with those other, uh, what was it, those attorneys or whatever? Or they said they were attorneys? The ones that were pointing guns at, uh, at protesters? They were attorneys, yeah. yeah. The Floridian attorneys that were pointing guns at the Black Lives Matter. With, with the beautiful fucking uh, trigger finger discipline there? That's fucking Christ. <laughs> just waving the guns around, yeah. Um, I love it. So... Uh, I don't know, man. Fuck it. You know, we'll see what happens. Who, who do you guys think? Uh, not who are you voting for, but who do you guys think is going to win uh, the presidency? Let, let's give us some type of order. Who goes first? Uh, why do you? I think Biden's going to win. Water. I don't think so. Why? 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 You got to give us a little snippet of why you think that's that's going to happen. I don't know. Like the past year and a half or whatever. Like the, I really can't stand how this guy can't like shut up when he needs to. You know. Mm. Um, that's a lot of different topics or whatever that I'm not going to get into because I fucking hate talking about politics. Really, yeah, it's like a sore subject. Like it just causes arguments and things, and especially right now, like there's so many different views or whatever. And, and, and like you said, we, it's it's like uh, good versus evil to most people. You know, I'm about to drive over to Isaac's house and fucking have a uh, fucking locker box him. <laughs> All right, Potter, who do you think is going to win? Not who you're going to vote for. Who do you think is going to win? Uh, I don't know. It's, uh, I can see the batting vote. I can just... G- give us a probability, Potter. Come on. Uh, God. After all the mail-in ballots are fucked up and counted uh, <laughs> crookedly, who who's going to win big- Biden? Who's going to win bigly? I can see Biden pulling ahead for majority of the counts. How about that? All right. Sosa. I really don't know, sir. Ah, fucking shit. Uh, I think, uh, you know, you're starting to see the cracks on the wall with Trump's campaign and uh, his base, and he's really done a shit fucking job of uh, with this pandemic. Mm-hmm. It's just people are starting to see that shit. Uh, so right now, I think that Biden has the uh, the momentum, right? Especially picking uh, Kamala Harris. That's not me saying in favor for or against her. I'm just saying that she's got a lot of political strength behind her. She is the right person for that ticket to get him, you know, that little bump in the numbers. So I'd say uh, he's looking like he's getting momentum right now. However, he might fumble fumble and fuck it all up during the during the debates. Well, because, you, you know, as uh, Biden says, yeah. if, if you don't uh, vote for him, you ain't black. Mm-hmm. He's one hair sniff away from winning. <laughs> yeah, it, like it, it is his. Uh, what is that saying? It's his election to lose. So I, I think that uh, if he keeps getting that momentum, it, it'll be in the bag for him. But he really can't be tripping over his own shoelaces there towards the end. I kinda, got shoelaces. <laughs> I thought it was I just think a, they're Velcro now. Yeah, I thought it was just a strap <laughs> right, Velcro. Right. Yeah. But I think that Trump has somebody else tied his shoelaces. He's too fucking fat to reach down and touch his shoes. <laughs> The, these, these, straps, <laughs> these straps are the best straps. Yeah, <laughs> only I have these straps. They, they go. <laughs> it, it's never been done before, you know? It just, you, you take it, and it goes, and then you do the other one, and have you seen my feet? They're g- giant feet. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're gorgeous you, feet. Can, They're the best feet. Uh, oh, along yeah. with my fucking bone spurs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm actually going to go... On the opposite side here, I think Trump's going to win it. I've been saying it since, you know, he got elected the first time. He's going to win it again. You know, um, so. historically, you've been seeing presidents win two terms over and over again. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Whether they be, you know, because people who are, I'm going by the people who are on the fence. Right. You obviously you have his group of fucking cocksuckers that are going to just follow his every word and drink the Kool-Aid. And, and just fucking, they're, everything he says is gospel, right? 
on the other side of the fence, you got the people that just hate everything he does, right? But you do have those people on the fence, and the people on the fence um, typically go with what's comfortable. And although we're not, um, I don't know, things aren't going great, you know, I think those people would be comfortable enough to say, like, eh, I'm going to keep the status quo. Um, I've talked to a few people who, who wouldn't have voted for him in the last election that are going to vote for him now. And it's kind of, that's kind of scary, you know? And, and also I think that the, you know, uh, veiled racism of some people and sexism is going to play a role as well, because that's honestly the reason I think Hillary didn't win because people didn't want, uh, a female president. Right. And now this time it's kind of a double whammy because they don't, you know, they've, you know, the people that are on the fence that might have their prejudices, maybe they don't want a black woman in power because realistically, you know, Biden could fucking croak <laughs> or, you know, he, he's just mm-hmm. one hair sniff away from dementia, you know, and if he's fucking <laughs> deemed, you know, unfit to, to, to preside over the position, we might have, you know, our first ever, you know, black woman president. And I think people that are on the fence that... I don't know. I, I, I think that's their, their line of thought. I think some people are just not ready for that. Well, I mean, to comment on that, that, that one uh, professor, what the fuck's his name? Uh, Alan Lynchman, mm. the, the guy that's been predicting who's going to win presidential elections since the 80s. Mm. He called Trump in 2016. He's uh, he's calling Biden this time. Oh. And that's as of two days ago. I mean, so I don't know, man. You know, he knows more than me, but that's what I think. He, he, can, he can drink yeah. the ass juice, too. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you brought up dementia and Potter didn't have anything to say. Oh, yeah. What do you think about people with dementia, Potter? <laughs> he doesn't think of them as people. <laughs> Watch on the next episode. Potter's I think uh, uh-huh. Biden would just Potter. have to fucking bomb at uh, his debates. He would just have to do so bad and not remember anything and just mix up every fucking thing he's talking about. And yeah, those are my thoughts, be, exactly. For it to be almost like a for sure thing for Trump, mm-hmm. it's it's too close to... It's just a shit show to call who's going to win for sure. Um, yeah, I think last last time it was just nobody fucking liked Hillary. She was just a fucking bitch. And something about like email, Trump emails. Man. People kept spewing some bullshit about emails or whatever. Potter. <clears throat> I don't have to spew that shit. <laughs> Do it for yourself. I'm just giving you a hard time, Potter. <laughs> but uh, let's close it out here. So, you know, we uh, we talked about uh, making time for friendships. So hopefully, you know, when you guys' kids get a little older, they start wrestling and maybe we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll go to their wrestling tournaments instead of having to be the fucking creeps at the wrestling tournaments with no kids. That always felt kind of weird. <laughs> right? Yeah. Going to the state tournament. Yeah, that'd be great. Going to the state tournament. Who are you guys here to watch? Uh, the tournament. <laughs> oh, you guys with any school? No. No. Nope. Watch we all came in the same van. <laughs> Just watch. Want to watch some wrestling? <laughs> some some high school boys wrestling. <laughs> some young boys in tights. Yes, sir. That's a little much. God damn it! But yeah, I maybe- felt like the state champions were uh, championships were just an excuse for us to go grab. Beers and drink, uh, drink craft beer and eat pizza and watch fucking garage bands and fucking dive bars. Yep. Yeah, I, pretty much. I always found it kind of weird when you offered the state champ a beer, Whitey. <laughs> <laughs> it was even weirder when he offered him a head job. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Don't worry about that, man. We'll, we'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I know that's. Somehow that's not getting spliced out, sons of bitches. It's not. It's gonna totally stir- did that shit. <laughs> but I'm denying everything. All right. Well, we'll Which get- makes me sound like I did it, you sons of bitches. I hate you all. We'll get this one going. Um, episode 30. You guys are all back? Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, here. Fuck right. it. And hopefully we can, we can fucking uh, ambush people by that point. Matt's got his phone cut off, but he's going he's gonna to be on the show, damn it. That's, that's the campaign of the show. We're going to get he him on the show. He may even be listening to this show. He might, so. you know, but we're going to get him to face all the baby mamas on the fucking podcast. Some Jerry Springer shit. 
Every Do you have enough time for that, Fabian? Every single woman that he has ever STD'd will be on this podcast. That's I, think our, I don't think our bandwidth is strong enough for that. You sir. know what? I have Zoom Pro, so I think I can have up to 100 guests. That still might not be enough, but we'll get as many on as we can. At least the ones that speak English. Yeah, Matt's one of those guys that you show up to a party with and you know that you're not leaving the party with. Like, he's just gone at some point. You're just dropping him off. Yeah. You're just dropping him off. Exactly, yeah. yeah pretty much. He needed a ride. It was like, do not rely on Matt for a ride home. No. <laughs> you like, bust out a whole new server just for that job. No, not enough bandwidth. <laughs> not enough memory. <laughs> you know why? Not we, enough everything. You know why you wouldn't give Matt a ride, a ride home is because he'd be riding a fucking 200-pounder back home. <laughs> yeah, that, was, uh, that was his type. But anyway, uh, it's been it's been a good episode. We'll get everybody back on. Thank you, for everybody, for listening at home. Appreciate it. Thank you. Fuck you and good night. on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Like, follow, and share on Facebook and Instagram at Ignorance of Strength Podcast and on Twitter at The Ignorance Pod.